This is not going to scale well. Let me call Charles. Hey, man, what's up? Hey, Charles, I'm sorry to bother you. No worries, man. I'm actually at a good stopping point, so your timing is perfect. Well, that's good to hear. I'll try not to take up too much of your time. But uh, here, let me share my screen and show you what I'm working on. All right, so this may look familiar. Oh, yeah, I recognize that project. Glad to see you're still working on it. Yeah, well, for now. I'm getting dangerously close to giving up, though. Oh, no, don't say that. What's the problem? Well, last time we spoke, you showed me how to use C-sharp events to decouple the logic that opens this door. Right, we added an event to the keypad class that fires whenever it gets unlocked and then have the door listen to that event and open whenever it gets invoked. Yep, and it works really well, but now I want a few more things to happen when the keypad gets unlocked. Oh yeah? Like what? Well, that's the thing. I don't really know. Want to see what I've got so far? Sure. So it isn't much, but now when the player unlocks the keypad, the sound plays, the door opens, and this timer in the next room starts counting down. I'm thinking it'll be the start of the next puzzle or something. Wow, that's pretty cool, man. Thanks. I'm happy with it so far, but I'm struggling with the approach. Oh yeah? Tell me more. Well, the first thing is that I'm still trying to figure out what I want to happen when this particular keypad gets unlocked. Okay. My problem is that I have a lot of ideas and it's taking way too long to test them all out. Okay, I think I understand. You're getting slowed down because you have to change the code every time you want to try a new idea, right? Exactly. I mean, I love how the code is decoupled, but somehow it still feels too rigid. Hmm, I get you. So what's your other problem? The other issue I'm having is that I can't decide where the code should live. Right now, I've placed it all in this class called keypad effects, but I don't know, it still feels kind of limited. Yeah, I could see that, especially if you want to add different keypads with their own events. Which I definitely want to do. So I think it's fair to say that you understand my problem. Do you have any thoughts? Well, first, I wouldn't say you have a problem per se, just a change in your requirements. Okay, go on. Well, last time we spoke, you needed a way to decouple the logic that unlocks your keypads from the logic that opens your doors. And we accomplished that using C-sharp events. But now you need a way to configure those events in a way that's more flexible and easier to change. Does that make sense? Sure, that's right. But how do we do that? Well, I think the answer is to expose the configuration of your keypad events in the UI. That way, you don't have to keep changing your code, and you can configure each keypad on an individual basis. Hmm. Does that mean we need to create a custom property drawer? That is one approach, but I think in this case, we can use one of Unity's built-in types instead. Oh yeah? Which type is that? Here, uh, open up this link. Huh, Unity events? I didn't even know those existed. Yep. And I think they're the perfect solution for your requirements. Hmm. Looks like they almost work just like C-sharp events. What's the difference? Well, besides some syntactic sugar, the key differentiator is that Unity events can be saved with the scene. Really? Hmm. And that would mean they're serialized, right? Yeah. In fact, if you've ever seen Ryan Hipple's game architecture video... <laughs> Are you kidding? Who hasn't? <laughs> Good point. Well, he refers to Unity events as serialized function calls because it's kind of what they are. Hmm, interesting. Not gonna lie though, that went right over my head. <laughs> no worries, it's kind of a weird concept to grasp. Why don't you uh, open up your code editor and I'll show you with a simple example. Sure. Okay, now go ahead and add a private string called my string and mark it with a serialized field attribute. Okay. Uh, oh, I actually know a shortcut for this in Writer. All I have to do is type s field, hit tab, and then fill out all the parameters. Nice. I see you using live templates. Heck yeah, they're a huge time saver. So that string you just created is actually serialized by Unity. Do me a favor and open up the link I just sent you in chat. Okay. I suggest you read through this later because it's good knowledge to have. But basically, serialization is the process of transforming data into a format that Unity can store and reconstruct later. That's just a fancy way of saying that you could save your scene and trust that the value of your my string variable will be saved too. Gotcha. So what, Unity events hold functions that can be saved? Yes, saved and almost equally as important, configurable from the editor as well. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. But first, why don't you switch back to Writer and replace your C-sharp event with a Unity event? Hmm, okay. So first I'll remove what I have here, then create a serialized field for our Unity event. 
course with the same name. And wow, that was easy. Oh, let me uh, remove the string property too. Perfect. Wait, is that really it? Well, you'll want to wire it up too, right? Good point. Let me switch back to Unity and get this all set up. First thing I need to do is select my keypad and... Hey, look at that. I see my unlocked event here in the UI. Yep, pretty nice, right? Yeah. So I guess I can remove this other component now and hook up all the function calls I had hard-coded. That's right. Cool, now I just need to test it out. Looks like it works. Nice. Wow, man, this is gonna save me a lot of time. Thank you so much for your help. Hey, man, as always, the pleasure is mine. But uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that Unity events do have some concerns when it comes to performance. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but listen, we can talk about that another time. Given what I know about your project and its requirements, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Okay, fair enough. And sort of like you mentioned earlier, if my requirements change, we just need to adapt, right? A hundred percent. All right, man, I actually got to hop off, but uh, I'll catch you later. Sounds good. Catch you later. A special thanks to my top supporters, Berkowitz 3D, Dark Rush Photography, Joe Tizol, R-Star, Thomas, Trond, Yakub Al-Safari, and Iron Alex. Thanks, guys.